Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. Mr. President, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the opportunity to brief uh, the Council on the eighth report of the Secretary General on the threat posed by ISIL Daesh uh, to international peace and security and the range of United Nations efforts in support of member states in countering the threat. I would also like to thank on the Secretary General Dalmi Voronkov for the overview of the report and to thank both UNOCT and the analytical and sanction monitoring team for the support and collaboration in preparing the report. As we have heard, despite its dwindling control over territory that once provided it with resources and a base from which to plan and launch attacks, ISIL continues to present us with many complex challenges. This change in circumstances has forced ISIL to adapt and transform itself into a covert, more locally focused network in Iraq, yet ISIL has retained its global intent and global networks with a presence not just in Iraq and the Syrian Arab Republic, but also in many other regions of the world. Of all international terrorist organizations, uh, it remains the most likely to carry out a large-scale complex attack. And it continues this determination to undermine stabilization efforts and to fuel sectarian tensions is also a major concern. Mr. President, as the Secretary General's report makes clear, member states continue to face complex challenges in responding to the threat posed by ISIL and its affiliates. I wish briefly to highlight just a few of them, three of those challenges. First, in Iraq and the Syrian Arabic Republic, ISIL's destructive legacy remains. That legacy is manifested not only in the millions of displaced persons who continue to live in the IDP camps, but also in the damage inflicted upon buildings, infrastructure, and the social fabric. During the joint high-level bilateral consultations held with on the Secretary General and myself in Iraq last year, I witnessed the physical and social devastation caused by years and years of conflict. It was apparent that reconstruction would take many years and would require significant resources, as will restoring and reconciling communities after so many years of conflict. It will require a comprehensive criminal justice that abides by the rule of law, and it will only succeed through the continued commitment and involvement of local, national, regional, and international actors. This process of restoring justice and accountability will, of course, also require the effective collection, preservation, and use of evidence. Member states operating in conflict and post-conflict environments face significant challenges obtaining admissible evidence to prosecute and convict ISIL members for their crimes, including crimes of sexual violence and trafficking in persons in accordance with international law and fair trial standards. And where criminal justice officials are unable to operate in high-risk environments, the military can play a crucial role in the collection, preservation, and lawful sharing of evidence. Given these challenges, I welcome the establishment and work of UNIDAT, the United Nations Investigative Team for Accountability of Daesh ISIL, and CETAT stands ready to support the investigative team in any way possible. Second, ISIL's territorial losses have brought an increase in the number of terrorist suspects and offenders who are in custody, including returning and relocating foreign terrorist fighters and their family members. Many states have alerted CETAT to their difficulties in adequately assessing the risk posed by such prisoners, including both men and women, and in managing them in a manner that presents further radicaliz prevents further radicalization to violence in prison systems. It's vital that states continuously monitor, evaluate, and review the effectiveness of their prosecution, rehabilitation, and reintegration strategies and programs. Any review and oversight of comprehensive um, um, PRR, prosecution, re 
habilitation reintegration strategies must include appropriate protection of international human rights, which also take into consideration age and gender sensitivities. And those um, strategies uh, must be both comprehensive and mutually consistent with um, rehabilitation, whether in prisons or in alternative uh, settings, linked to prosecution and reintegration. Third, terrorist groups, including ISIL and its affiliates, have consistently demonstrated their intent and ability to exploit new technologies uh, and sought innovative ways to circumvent obstacles to financial, technical and recruitment capabilities. I will highlight just a few examples. During our assessment visits in West Africa, we identified and flagged the increased use of mobile payment services by terrorist groups as a potential terrorism financing risk. Concerned at the possible exploitation of blockchain technology, states are also seeking ways to address the potential risk posed by the misuse of cryptocurrencies for malicious, criminal and terrorist purposes. States are increasingly concerned by the use of improvised explosive devices in terrorist attacks around the world, access to the relevant know-how, including on the internet, and the ability to obtain precursor materials allow terrorists to build IEDs with relative ease. The gathering, preservation, and sharing of digital evidence relating to terrorist exploitation of the internet continues to play a crucial role in the prosecution and of suspected terrorists. Within the framework of a joint global initiative implemented with UNODC and the International Association of Prosecutors, CTED will continue to support member states' efforts in this area by facilitating delivery of technical assistance and enhancing cooperation will with relevant stakeholders, including the private sector. We continue to face many challenges indeed in these areas, but we must also recognize our achievements. Here I would highlight the work of the Counterterrorism Committee and CETA to develop the addendum to the Madrid Guiding Principles. The addendum, which was formally adopted by the CTC on the 27th of December last year, serves as a practical tool to assess states to address the FDF phenomenon, including by addressing the challenges posed by FDF returnees and relocators. Its adoption followed extensive consultations with a broad range of stakeholders, including from the wide UN membership, civil society, academia, and the private sector. The addendum provides guidance to member states on effective responses to evolving FDF phenomenon, focusing on measures to be taken in a number of areas, including, but not limited, to border security and information sharing, countering terrorist uh, narratives, countering violent extremism conducive to terrorism, risk assessment and intervention programs, judicial measures, including prosecution, rehabilitation and reintegration, and international cooperation. The CTC and CDAT will work closely with member states to promote effective use of the guiding principles. The CTC will also hold an open briefing on the addendum to raise awareness of the principles, facilitate open, interactive discussions on the challenges posed by the FDF phenomenon, and promote discussion of priority capacity building needs. In our country assessment, visit on behalf of the CTC, CTAT will continue to emphasize the need for member states to implement the relevant council resolutions and to employ a comprehensive and holistic response to the terrorist threat. We will also continue to support member states in developing comprehensive responses to terrorism and to facilitate, in cooperation with UNOCT, the targeted delivery of technical assistance to states. And we shall continue to work with our implementing partners to deliver as one UN. In the Lake Shat Basin, CTAT strategic support, UNODC's technical expertise and key contributions from other UN partners have helped member states to begin the development of comprehensive strategies to prosecute, rehabilitate and reintegrate persons associated with Boko Haram. 
UNODC and UNOCT, in close cooperation with TTAT, are currently engaged in a joint project to provide tailored capacity building assistance to prison staff and other relevant stakeholders. The project aims to enhance prison security and safety, to strengthen risk and needs assessments, and enhance rehabilitation and reintegration. UNODC, CTAT, and the International Association of Prosecutors have together developed the practical guide for requesting electronic evidence across borders. And UNOCT and CTAT recently deployed a UN consultant to support Iraq in the development of a comprehensive and integrated counterterrorism strategy which will help Iraq address the post-ISIL environment in a holistic manner. These are just a few examples of our collaborative efforts to support member states to countering the continued threat posed by ISIL. We shall continue to work together with our many implementing partners, including member states, under other UN entities, international and regional organisations, civil society, academia and the private sector to ensure a holistic and effective approach to this grave threat to international peace and security. And I do thank you. Muchas gracias.